When it comes to improving hip mobility, strengthening that ball and socket joint allows us to get deeper in the hips. I'm challenging the adductors. You feel it, you feel that tension. I truly believe that strengthening that area and putting ourselves in positions where we can strengthen range of motion is the best way to not only improve, but have a lasting impact on the tissue that we're trying to influence. Let's start with this shin box isometric here. So we're gonna take this tennis ball and put it underneath the knee, find a comfortable spot. I really love tennis balls because it allows us to feel the feedback of us pressing into the ground. If you just press into the ground, you may have a hard time influencing your uh, athletes or even yourself of how hard am I pressing down? Well, it's hard to visualize that. But with a tennis ball, you feel it. You feel that tension. You can watch it as a coach. So I love tennis balls for that. So from here, I'm thinking being in the shin box position up nice and tall, and I'm going to slightly fold forward with my hips. So I'm not bending over with my spine. I'm just kind of folding forward a little bit. And from here, I'm gonna think nice and tall, and I'm gonna build into this contraction. So I'm thinking squeeze this ground as tight as I can. Squeeze, 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 challenging internal and external rotation trying to blow this ball out. You're gonna get a lot of feeling from this back leg as well as I really try to feed this isometric contraction, loading internal and external rotation of both the front leg and the lead, or the lead leg and the front leg, and then I'm gonna let off the gas. From the side, looks like just being in that normal 90-90 shin box position, whatever it is, and we're just gonna position the ball. We're going to rotate to it, so I'm almost leading into it and I'm gonna get that slight fold like I talked about, get nice and tall, and I'm gonna think build into this contraction, and I'm gonna think break this tennis ball. Break it. I like a good five to 10 second hold. Really trying to challenge those hips. <sighs> Slowly let off the gas, don't come off too fast. When it comes to strengthening the hips, something we often overlook is the adductors, and we shouldn't because the adductors play a huge role into the pitch of the pelvis, what's going on, and can definitely in affect internal rotation of the hips. So I love this body weight setup here. So I'm in this shin box, this 90-90 position we're probably familiar with, it definitely if you just did the first movement, and we're just gonna go down to our side. So now I'm kind of holding this lateral bridge and what I'm gonna think is I'm gonna take this top leg here and I'm gonna drive it into the ground. So it's gonna pick my hips up. And from here where this gets really challenging is now I'm gonna lift this leg up so it has no help. If you need to regress it, you can keep this leg on the ground obviously, but if we're ready for it, let's lift this leg up. Now you're holding. We're holding this lateral bridge. I'm challenging the adductors. Hold this position. Once again, I'm thinking that get it to 10 second range, slowly control myself back down to the ground. If that's too much, we can prop our knee up on something so we're not, on, we're not leveraging that tissue too much. So I was kind of in this angle, maybe we pull that angle up and I prop my knee up on a couple plates or a couple box, whatever it may be, that would be a little bit easier as well as using this front leg. But what we don't wanna do is overlook the adductors because they play a huge role in our hip mobility. So we've talked about the importance of challenging the hips as the ball and socket joint they are through rotation, internal and external rotation. We obviously shouldn't overlook hip flexion and extension. So I love a front foot elevated split squat. It allows us to get deeper in the hips rather than doing a regular split squat because we have the elevated surface. And as well, we can coach this up and we can program it with external implements. We can load this tissue further with dumbbells, with zercher holds, with a bar, whatever we want we can kind of load this and program it no different than regular strength training. So from here, I'm thinking intent is everything. So I'm getting my pelvis underneath me. I'm overemphasizing that posterior pelvic tilt. So I'm gonna feel this right side, this right quad area, this whole right front side of my body light up quite a bit as I extend down because this knee is gonna get carried back behind me. So I'm getting in this position, I'm nice and tall, and I'm descending down, and I'm holding this position where I'm almost touching the ground. I'm tilting my pelvis. I'm really trying to load this tissue, make it as hard as I can, take my feet, squeeze them underneath me on the ground, and hold this position. We'll start with a 10 second hold. And once again, to make this harder to program this, we can go dumbbells, we can go zercher hold, whatever your imagination takes you. But once again, I'm trying to imprint mobility with strength training. So we've talked about using the ground as a way to challenge internal and external rotation through isometrics. We talked about 
strengthening the adductors when it comes to the big role they play on the pelvis. And we've talked about challenging hip flexion and extension through isometrics as well. All of those can be challenged with duration or the last one with loading with external weights. When it comes to this last one, this fourth one, I want you to think of this as something you need to feel first. So I'm not flexible enough to be on the ground and hold a pigeon pose per se, but this is something that's grown on me quite a bit when it comes to loading those hips and this lead leg up here. So I'm gonna take an incline bench and I'm just gonna kind of throw my leg up on front of it. What's often overlooked when I see people do this movement is they just kind of extend in the lower back or they get so obsessed with this front leg that they forget about the importance of the posterior side and this left leg. So I want you to think about this left leg. I'm up on the balls of my feet here and I'm just gonna kind of sink into my hip a little bit. Now I'm gonna take this left hip pocket and I'm gonna drive it forward, squeezing this left glute. And now from here, I got all this tension sitting rotationally on this right leg and I'm just gonna kind of fold in and then I'm gonna push the bench away. So from here, I'm holding this isometric that might feel pretty easy and then I'm gonna fold over, almost taking my hip back and I'm rotating over, holding this rotation, and then push the bench away. Start body weight, and this is something we can progress. I love doing it with a band, so I'll hook a band up diagonally away from my body, so it almost feeds me into this hip more, and then I'll pull it back and hold, and you'll feel this tension as you're holding this isometric. Strengthening that ball and socket joint through strength training, loading back, feeling that fold in the hip, pull that band, push into the bench, hold this isometric. I hope some of those tips help you. That's just four movements to kind of strengthen that ball and socket joint and that complex area of our body that divides the upper half and the lower half. Don't overlook the adductors and remember, mobility training is strength training. Load that tissue.